Uh, the topic is Meniere disease. And Meniere disease is a very, very classic triad of three things. And the first thing is a vertigo, which is a sense of spinning. The second thing is tinnitus, which is ringing in the ear. And the third thing is eventually hearing loss. So if you are presented with a clinical vignette on the licensing exams that has these three, there's a good chance that it's Meniere's disease. So let's talk about this. Um, usually happens between ages of 20 and 50. Uh, lots of causes, including family history and uh, some uh, autoimmune disorders as well, can lead to this. And the main pathophysiology is that there is a buildup of fluid in the uh, inner ear. And that causes the symptomatology over time. And what's interesting is that this kind of comes and goes. It's one of those things that it's it has certain episodes where it can come for a short period of time and then go away. And because of that, it's actually quite quite troublesome to the patient because there's symptoms symptom free periods and then all of a sudden the symptoms come back and the clinical vignettes will sort of uh, illustrate that so what are the symptoms well like I said before there's three mains there's the T tinnitus which is the um, ringing in the ears there's the sense of vertigo which is a, a sense of spinning and then eventually there is the hearing loss. Uh, there's also associated nausea and vomiting, NV, my abbreviation for nausea and vomiting. And the um, treatment sort of involves two parts. There's treatment of the symptoms, which sort of sort of like just a band-aid. And then there's treatment of the actual etiology, which is the fluid buildup the endolymphatic endolymphatic fluid buildup will be treated one way and the nausea and vomiting treated in another way so before I get to treatment quickly diagnosis really it's just a clinical diagnosis based on the patient's history once in a while you may do an MRI but that's very expensive so what is the treatment where the first line treatment of Meniere's disease is diuretics. And these diuretics help remove the fluid that has built up in the inner ear. And also a low salt diet has shown to help. Now, the symptoms of nausea and vomiting are treated with an antiemetic and some of the antiemetics that are commonly used include promethazine and prochlorperazine. Now, diuretics being the first lead treatment, I think it's very important to know which diuretic, and there's two, the most common one is hydrochlorothiazide. This is most likely going to appear in the licensing exam. And there's another one that's used, it's called acetazolamide. So that's the treatment. And you will commonly see this on the licensing exam, so let's take a look at two similar clinical vignettes. A 54-year-old man comes to the physician because of ringing in his ears. It's the tinnitus. A feeling of spinning, that's the vertigo. 
and a progressive loss of hearing in his left ear. He says that this all began a while ago and a slight feeling of unsteadiness and this annoying ringing. He never came to the doctor because he thought he was going crazy, but now his wife is getting worried that the television needs to be much louder and he constantly says what when he speaks uh, to him on his left side, when she speaks to him on his left side. He has no chronic medical conditions, does not take any meds, does not drink alcohol. Uh, examination so shows nystagmus, but no other abnormalities, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. Well, let's go through these one by one. In benign positional vertigo, there's no hearing loss. So this, this patient clearly has hearing loss, so that's not it. Choice B, a benign recurrent vertigo. Interestingly, choice B and choice E are the exact same thing. And um, they also have no change in hearing. So now we're down to two. Toxic labyrinthitis. Um, that's actually related to alcohol. And it's interesting how the clinical vignette even talks about that. I guess the physician was really knowledgeable and asks about his alcohol use. So by process of elimination, it's Meniere's disease. And of course, there's more than enough clues in the vignette to point to that. Finally, a 71-year-old man with mild hypertension and high cholesterol comes to the office complaining of two weeks of intermittent vertigo, with each episode lasting about two to four hours. He also reports having a low-frequency buzzing, and I'm pretty sure that's referring to the tinnitus, which is constant but waxes and wanes in intensity. He tells you that over this time he has been having trouble hearing, while in noisy areas such as in restaurants or temple gatherings. Physical exam is normal. Vertigo is not exacerbated by changes in head position. Most appropriate management of this patient is two. Okay, well, more than enough clues to point to Meniere's disease. So basically they're saying, how do you treat it? Well, the first line treatment of Meniere's disease is diuretics. And the most common one is hydrochlorothiazide. And that is a choice. So that is definitely the correct answer for Meniere's disease, most appropriate management.